Good evening and welcome back to Donnie's Kitchen. Hello everybody. Hope you all had a great Wednesday. Hope you had a great few days for the for the week almost. Hope you're having a great day so far. The time now is 5.34 p.m. here in Donnie's Kitchen and welcome back to another video. Make sure you are subscribed and if you are just subscribed, thank you for supporting my channel here on YouTube in Donnie's Kitchen. And this is meal number four, recipe number four. And it is January 18th, 2022. It's a Wednesday evening. And our favorite meal is going to be baked barbecue chicken with spinach and some steamed vegetables. Like if you can find them like in your, your grocery store, of course, but in your frozen department, you know, it's called the, the California blend. So it's, it's with broccoli, cauliflower, and round carrots. That's inside the bag. But if you have like just two people and just like Hamilton and I, this is our favorite meal. But I want to share you to the world my meal. And also we're going to have garlic toast. So whatever garlic toast you like, make sure you have it in a small medium skillet. Like about this size skillet for your garlic toast. Put just a few uh, tablespoons of butter into your skillet. Let it get on medium heat. Let it cook and turn it every one to two minutes. So you can have a nice crispy type of garlic toast and set it aside onto your plate and your meal. So I already seasoned my package of the chicken, uh, not chicken breast, but chicken thighs with the skin on them. So we're going to get that started. I already did it earlier this afternoon, but if it's best to do it overnight so your chicken can marinate and get in with the seasonings whatever you put um, onto your seasonings. But my go-to seasonings, I'll show you that in a second. But this is what we're making for tonight's dinner. So yes, so let's get started. So I'm gonna leave that there so that can be out of the way. But I already have my skillet here on medium heat with just about three tablespoons of vegetable oil, but you can use any vegetable that you want in your kitchen. And then this is the box that I was telling you about with the spinach, this is the green giant spinach here with no sauce and this is um ch chopped already spinach and this is in a nine ounce this is what um i'm going to use you can also put this in a microwave but i'm going to put it into the pot here which i already have here with the lid already not cooked already and then inside your box with the spinach it comes in this bag here where it says pull here and then pull here you know so you can get it open quickly but this is just a good easy type of meal so i'm going to show you how i get this meal together and also you want to keep your piece of foil um as well so you can make holes so when you after you're done cooking your chicken into your skillet and you can put it into your oven for a good 30 to 35 minutes and then add your favorite barbecue sauce from Kraft or sweet baby ray's barbecue sauce you can definitely do that but this is what we're going to use tonight by Kraft. It's the Slow Simmered Sweet Brown Sugar um, Barbecue Sauce. This is it right here. And this is in a 1 pound, but it's in an 18 ounce of net weight. And then my two go seasonings that I put onto my chicken thighs are seasoned salt. Just a couple of tablespoons. Onion powder. Um, about a couple of tablespoons on both sides. The skin and the um the side that i don't have the skin on them so it was the meat side yeah and then the ground black pepper and i also used garlic powder just a few tablespoons of that as well this is going to be tossed in the trash and my skillet has been heating up for just a few minutes or so so you definitely want to keep this and i also put on the chicken thighs as well i use poultry poultry season that's used for like if you're doing stuffing, you know, from scratch, you know, with the day old or two, you know, bread, you know, loaf bread you can use, you know, like, you know, you put your sandwiches on, you can do that. But that's around Thanksgiving time, but that's what I put on my chicken because that's, I didn't put too much. I put about a half a tablespoon on each side and this is how the chicken looks like. This is just chicken thighs with the skin and the meat side so i see them both sides really good and i've been having them in the fridge covered up for at least at least about four to six hours but you can definitely make sure you 
you season this, your chicken overnight so you can do it like the, the night before you go to bed uh, after your, um, your kitchen is clean you can definitely season your meat because best it's overnight or if you don't have time you can let it season between the time you wake up in the morning if you don't have to go to work or anything like that you can season around like nine o'clock in the morning and whatever time you want to cook this meal it your seasoning is ready you just cook it in the skillet with a few tablespoons of vegetable oil or any oil that any oil that you want to use be very good for your skillet also make sure your skillet is non-stick deep you know like a deep um skillet so that way none of the oil won't splash on you you know or your stove top you can always clean your stove top but just yeah make sure that is done make sure that your um burner is like on medium heat but not too of a high heat because you got the vegetable already in your skillet and it's all ready to go so um just take a pair of tongs definitely and then you, what you want to do is cook your your chicken thighs um meat first that's just how I do it. But cook it on this meat side first and then flip it over to the skin side because you know that's going to give your nice presentation to your plate when everything is done. It's only eight pieces, so I just use two packs of actually um, chicken thighs, you know, for my meat department. And you know, we're trying to really slow down on on cooking like red like red meat like we did last year for a whole year it was nothing but red meat red meat so i want to give it a break for a while and start cooking like a chicken baked chicken you know so now once your three pieces are already in because you don't want to overcrowd your like your your skillet do not overcrowd your skillet you can put like one more in there that's what we're going to do. And then turn your heat up just a little bit. Not too much. And yeah, and just let your other, let your chicken cook on either side for like 10 to 15 minutes. Over. Yeah, so this skillet is just for your garlic toast. But just have it out already, you know, or to your dish strainer, you know, have it out already. Yeah, so... Uh, also, after the meal, after we're done eating, um, I have to do another video from the meeting room. And yes, get ready to watch that video within the next few hours. So, dinner is being started, prepared now. So, I don't want to have it too early. But sometimes I like to eat a little early before 6. But with this meal, it will be done like a little around after 7 o'clock or around 8 o'clock. So, that way you can have a nice fresh meal. But if you want to cook this meal... It can be definitely be cooked before six o'clock. Make sure that your chicken is already seasoned. Pull that out already within a half an hour before you put it into your skillet because your meat is cold. You want your meat, you know, to be right out of the your refrigerator into your skillet. So yeah, make sure that it's done like that. You know, it's totally up to you, your way, your kitchen. And how's everyone's day today? So happy Wednesday to you all. God bless you all and welcome back to another video from Donnie's Kitchen. So make sure you take notes so that way you'll know what to do if you like to make this meal for you and your family or if it's just you and your husband. You know you want to do a R and R type of dinner meal. This will be good for you both. When your kids are gone, you know, or you want to make it for your whole family. If you have one, if you have two to six people in your family, you know, you and your husband and the kids, four kids, this is definitely a good family meal. So you can double up on the recipe also as well. I'll leave it in the description box below if you want to double up on the chicken. And this will last the leftovers for you for at least, mm, I say about one to four days and then make something else if you like. So yes, so I'm not going to start my spinach yet, but I want it in my pot already, you know, love for this meat will be in the oven too also as well at it'll be on your all you also want to preheat preheat your oven too to 400 degrees um fahrenheit so definitely do that and yeah and while your oven is already you know being preheated you can start putting your chicken into your skillet let that cook for a few minutes or so and then you'll know 
once that chicken is done, you know, then you're going to put it into the oven, all your pieces into your oven. Yes. So, I also want to make sure you get a separate plate. So that way when your chicken is done, you can put it on a, on a separate plate here also as well. And then put it back into your pan and then make some holes also into your foil piece as well. But you don't have to use the same foil piece. Definitely make sure you get a new piece of foil. And put just a few bricks of holes into your foil piece. And then once your whole, all your chicken is done, put it right into your oven that's already preheated at 400 degrees. And let it go for about between 30 to 35 minutes. Check your chicken also as well. And yes, so I'm checking my chicken now. I already have it in the skillet for about almost almost five minutes now. And it's getting there. So looking pretty good so far. Oh yeah. Looking pretty good. So yep. Yeah. And um be right back. So continue to watch. Be back. Okay, welcome back. Um, so all my, I just flipped my chicken over to the skin side because I want that nice presentation on to that crispiness in your chicken. And just make sure that your chicken on your meat side, meat side is cooked um, really good. You know, no longer pink because if it's a little pink, that's fine. And it's going to go right into the oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. And then once your chicken is done, you can add your pre-made barbecue sauce from Kraft or whichever barbecue, whichever barbecue sauce you like to definitely use. And yeah. Oh, and the show that I'm watching is, it's called, um, it's on OWN from Xfinity Cable. It's called um, Soul Food, um, Soul Food Cook-Off. So it's been, I've been watching the season, I'm on season one, episode three. So it's pretty good so far. Just watching some amazing, really good chefs that are can cook with soul food, you know, love in the heart like I do. Passion for it. I love to cook. So yeah, definitely give this meal a definitely try. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment, like, and subscribe to Starny Kitchen. And thank you all so much for making my free cooking videos that I've done so far. A great thumbs up and a like. Thank you all so much. It means the world to me from my heart. And thank you. And I hope I'm making these meals. I um, hope you are making these meals. I hope these meals are coming out the way you want them to be. But if you think you want to add more seasonings to your chicken or to whatever vegetable you want to cook with your chicken, you can definitely do that. But if you don't like barbecue sauce, you can definitely just cook your chicken just as is and then put it in the oven also as well without the barbecue sauce. It's totally up to you, your way, your kitchen. But yeah, I wanted to show you what I got from Walmart last night. Um, these are just some spatulas that I love with this mint, not mint green, but like a greenish blue type of color, or blue color. I do love like different color of um, rubber spatulas. So, this, so I got two packs of these and they were like, I want to say like um, $1.98 per packet. So I like that. And since um, our oven is basically small, I try to see if this fits in. This is by the main, um, the main stays from Walmart. This is a pizza, now I pizza pan. And this is a 16, no, I'm sorry, a 12 inch, I'm sorry, 16. Um, it's, it's like a 12 inch pizza pan. I do like the size. It com comes out great. So this is a very good size. I got some other stuff too as well. So I just wanted to show you those two few things. So let's get right back into the meal. Since the chicken is basically looking good on its thin side. Take off the excess oil to um to your chicken because you don't want a lot of oil onto the plate. And this is how it looks so far looks very very good okay it's going to be set aside so i'm going to put these other four in here 
cook with the meat side down or you can cook with the skin side down first totally up to you but i like to cook with the meat side down first and then i'll flip it over you know give your chicken about mm, you know five or seven minutes to cook on each side and then flip it over and then the oil that you have in here is going to go back into your pan so since the raw chicken was already in here i'm going to um wash this as well so that way um when it goes in the oven you know it'll have the grease from the skillet onto the pan so because that's how i you know like it but you can definitely use a wire rack with a with a cookie sheet um now you can put your chicken on there but put but put like a piece of long foil um, on top of your baking sheet and then um put your wire rack on top of there and then your chicken pieces that you already cooked from your first batch um definitely make sure you put it on there so that way it'll dissolve that way you're not using a paper towel because you want to still get that type of oil that moisture you know why the moisture from your chicken already onto the wire rack is what i'm trying to say i hope it helps but i'm hope i'm making sense because i'm very tired but I had today off and i thought about this meal since just like the other night so i wanted something different for hamilton and i so i wanted to cook us something different because we haven't had barbecue chicken in a while and in a while when i say a while i mean a while yes so give me just a minute i'm going to wash my pan and make sure in your kitchen it's totally up to you make sure you have your sink already prepared with this, with this soap and some hot water because you definitely always want to make sure you have you know your dish water already so that way you can already have you know some dish water and you can add whatever um baking pan whichever whatever you know that way you can use for you know you can put already into your sink and uh you know you already have your dish water already ready and that is hammy in the back ham yes. say hi <laughs> so yeah just always make sure you in, in your kitchen make sure you have some nice hot water to your sink because i always say clean as you go because that way uh, at the end of the dinner you know with your family you don't have that many you know pans to you know wash or if you have a dishwasher that's nice off as well and yeah just make sure you know your pan is very clean and stuff like that because always having dish water hot dish water already prepared already you know it's a very good thing because you want to clean as you go and i always have my towel so yes once this is cooked on the meat side i'm going to flip it over give it about like uh, i'll say about three to five seven well not three to five give it three to seven minutes to cook on each side of your chicken you can also test some of your meat that's already done already that's on your plate so you to see if you need more seasoning or anything like that already you know so okay flip it over lower nope, not ready yet so that side is not or not done yet just make sure you know you keep it at a good level so two is are done the other two is not done quite yet so just make sure you uh you wash your chicken whatever that you do so now we're going to put some oil into the pan here and you can put like a little bit of butter on the side but um oh let to show you okay show you what i got at walmart oh yeah and this is another item that i got from walmart a label maker and it comes with the dispenser you know to print out the whatever words you want to say so i definitely did some few things here this is a light brown sugar yellow cornmeal flour and the white sugar and this was like about twenty dollars and 98 cents close to 21 dollars so this is a very good investment to have for your kitchen if you want to label anything like you know your seasonings your condiments you know so this is a very good to get at walmart so yeah 
And yes, let's get back to the recipe. So this, these chickens are almost done, but not quite yet. So while that's cooking, you want to make sure you get your pan prepared, rinsed off and cleaned off as, also as well. And you can definitely use vegetable oil if you have, or canola oil, or olive oil, any oil that you love to use in your, in your cooking. It's a definitely good idea. I just use a, about three tablespoons of it, not too much of it. And then you can definitely get a paper towel and rub it in. So that's what we're going to do. So this is um, what my mom and my aunts and my grandmas always tell me is when you put oil in your butter, you want to just always make sure you spread it around with a, with a few paper towels, you know. It's also good for the butter too as well if you're making, baking something or whatever. But it's totally up to you in a way and just spread it all around. And definitely take your time in your kitchen with your meal. And then the access that you have from the paper towel, just throw it away. Of course, into your trash can. So yes, just check your meat. Take your time with your meal. It's no rush, you know, for a meal to serve to your family. So that is basically getting done and then you want to add your baked chicken that you already cooked with the first batch. This is number two batch right here. You want to just take your time, cook your meat on medium heat, on medium um, heat because you're going to put it right into the oven and make sure your oven is already preheated at 400 degrees and mine already is. It's all ready to go for my chicken but I'm waiting on this second batch to cook. So let me get my other chicken that I had cooked already and put it into the pan, the oil pan. And also after I washed a few dishes, I made sure I washed my hands. And my hands is not touching the chicken because I already washed my hands already. And yeah, just put your chicken, if you already cooked the first batch, put it already into your pan. Make sure that it's good. So this is going to take at least a good 30-35 minutes for your your chicken to cook. So because you have eight pieces, but if you have more than eight pieces and you're cooking it for, you know, like let's say for your family and for your friends, you can buy like three packs of chicken. This is a this is from from Tyson. This is the chicken chicken thighs with the skin on so remember that so definitely look at your meat department and if you think you want to try this milk try it out it does not take long it may take a few hours because it's first being fried in the pan and then it's going in the skillet for i mean the oven for at least 30 to 35 more minutes so that's a whole hour maybe like hour and 20 minutes already so far until you're cooking preparation type of meal and also with this meal Make sure that you season your meat very good from the skin side and then to the meat side it was over. Make sure you wear gloves also as well to when you season your meat. Yes, so that's what I did. And my two little seasonings I already showed you. My seasoned salts, my onion powder, my ground black pepper, and my garlic powder. I to show you, but that's what I normally use also as well. And then I use poultry season to bring out more of the flavor of the chicken. That's what I did. Just a few tablespoons of each seasoning onto your meat. You know, but if you want to also make it kind of spicy, you can add paprika to this. You can add Cajun, Cajun seasoning to this. You can add red pepper flakes on top of your chicken. That will be good too. And if you're into spices, that would be a good meal also. I mean, seasoning to your chicken also as well. Okay. 
you also want to make to also to make sure you have enough room for your other pieces and if you have a big enough um oven to fit two pans in here you can definitely make sure you have that also as well This is going to be a really good uh, meal to definitely cook and make for your family, your friends. You know, if you're trying to have like a nice, you know, type of party and you want to make this meal, I definitely would say go for it. It's a good, easy type of meal. It may take a few hours, but it's well worth a few hours uh, preparing this meal and cooking this meal. That's another piece waiting on the other last piece to be in here. And then you let your last piece of chicken cook, okay? So then while that's cooking, I'll be right back to show you the other part of this cooking with barbecue baked baked dyes. Baked chicken dyes. Be back. Okay, I am back. So once your all your chicken is cooked and done, you, you put it back into your oil pan. Definitely take a piece of oil. Okay. You also want to take a knife. You know, it does not matter. It could be a steak knife, whatever knife that you have available, and just poke some holes, like make them like thin, so that way your chicken can breathe. You know, because you don't want it to have a cover, so just make sure that it's where your chicken can breathe. And the, 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 when you poke your foil piece, you don't have to be perfect. So just make sure it's, you know, covered with holes so that way your chicken can breathe into your oven for just a few minutes. You want to make sure too, as you're done cooking your last piece of chicken, Make sure you can start, you know, you can clean up um, your oven counter, not oven counter, but your counter, you know, or get some other dishes done while your last piece of chicken is being cooked on the stove top to the skillet. And then once your last piece of chicken is done, put it into your, your pan with your piece of foil. And these are just the uh, cut right there. And then whatever like oil that you have from the skillet to your chicken, Make sure you can put it into your pan and then top it off too with a little bit of butter to each one table or well, half a tablespoon of each butter onto your chicken because you don't want your chicken to dry out. And also, yeah, make sure you do that too. So I'm going to do that right. I'm going to show you that also as well. And it smells phenomenal in this kitchen. So. This is a butter that I definitely love to use, Imperial Butter. This is the tub of butter. This is the 45 ounce, and this is 27% vegetable oil spread. I do love using this butter because it's a little more healthier for me since I'm a diabetic type 2. And yes, just use a spoon that you have. It's clean, it's for sure. And just put just about this much of butter onto each piece of, piece of chicken on top of it because you don't want your chicken to dry out before you put it into the oven. You want to make sure that your chicken is definitely moist. Um, that's just how my, my mom always taught me to make sure you have butter on each piece of your chicken, but not too much butter because you, know, you want it to stay moist and you don't want your chicken to dry out. Make sure that your chicken is being buttered very well. That way, yeah. Stay in there. Yeah, good. Okay. If you have a little bit of butter onto your spoon, you can spread it onto the onto the like chicken. And yeah, just go about like that much. Not too much butter because you know you don't want your chicken to be that much buttered. But just make sure it has enough butter on each piece of chicken. Again, about that much. You know, just basically eyeball eyeball it when you put the butter on top of your chicken. 
And if you have like some butter on your spoon, let's put it onto the edges of your chicken so that way every little piece of edge of the chicken can be buttered really, really good. And then, yep. Yeah. Okay, so that is done. Check and make sure to see if you put butter on each piece of your chicken. So like I said, if you have a bigger enough oven and you want to put two pans in here with your baked chicken, you can do that. And just open up your oven. And let the foil be on here for the first half an hour. And then 20 minutes later, take the other piece, take the foil piece off of your pan, off your chicken. And then like that. Put it into the oven and it'll be cooked within half an hour. You can also too set your timer on as well. If you have an oven that has the timer, you definitely put it on you know the first half an hour like this. But I just have this, this is fine. I love having this anyway. This is a very good thing to have too. Um, this is a kitchen must have in your kitchen this is very good too you can also make because it'll go for every second you know this is a very good timer to have for your kitchen so while the chicken is being cooked in your oven you already have it in your oven you can clean up your counter you can um make do something else in your kitchen or if you have if the kids have homework you can Definitely, um, they can do their homework with you, you know, whichever, you know, other things you want to do while, while your chicken is in the oven. You can definitely do that. And, yeah, I'll be back. Okay. Okay, I am back. So, after you um, took your foil off of your piece of your pan, you know, with your baked chicken already in there, and it got, like, a little more crispier for, like, another 20, about 20 more. And now this is the time that you want to add your barbecue sauce, which is whatever flavor barbecue sauce you like. Well, I like Kraft and Sweet Baby Ray, but I got Kraft, and I showed you what barbecue sauce I gotten. So now um, I put, I just poured enough sauce onto my chicken. Now I'm just going to use my rubber spatula and just brush on my barbecue sauce onto my chicken pieces. Just take your time with this. And then like the edges of your chicken, it should be like crispy. And then with the sauce, then it'll get like that sticky type of flavor. Um, not flavor, but it'll get that sticky type of feeling onto your chicken be, um, before you put on your barbecue sauce. And just make sure you put enough barbecue sauce on to your chicken also as well. Don't put too much where, you know, it's a lot of barbecue sauce, just enough. To where it'll get your whole chicken coated and also make sure you have if you have barbecue sauce into your pan it'll get your your meat side cooked also as well you want to make sure that your meat side of your chicken is barbecue sauce on that side also as well because you want to make sure that has sauce on there too so you want to just flip over your pieces of chicken like how I'm doing now And it smells so phenomenal in this kitchen with the baked chicken in the oven and then the barbecue sauce after, you know, a whole half an hour or more. Oh my goodness, it smells so divine in here. It smells phenomenal. I'm telling you, definitely make this meal for you and your family or your friends. And then just put the barbecue sauce on the side of the meat, but not too much. I don't like to add a whole lot. Just enough, you know. To where it'll cook on the other side also as well and then you want to make sure that you take your rubber spatula and just rub the barbecue sauce into your meat very very well and good and if you have some like i said in your pan use that too to get all enough of your chicken coated with that barbecue sauce or whatever sauce and make sure you have two bottles too 
Um, so that way you can have just enough barbecue sauce because you may need more, you know. So this is, I'm telling you, your chick, I mean your chicken, your chicken will smell, I mean your kitchen will smell phenomenal in your kitchen. Oh my goodness, the baked barbecue chicken. Wow. Man, I can't wait to eat. So I just checked my, um, I just checked my, um. Uh, my spinach just a few seconds ago just to see if it's cooking i mean i know it's cooking but just to make sure it's on low and also when you um do your chicken i mean your chicken your spinach i'm so sorry not talk um when your spinach is cooking make sure it stays on low you don't want to have it too high of a heat because you still gotta cook your chicken for another 15 more minutes and i say it's eating time after that yep so so this is going back in the oven for another few more minutes and now you can also you now your chicken already cooked on 400 you can turn it up to like 425 if you have an oven that where you can push the buttons on to your oven yes you could definitely use that turn it up to like 425 um for your chicken or i say about 450 but do it, you know, however you want. But just make sure it's set at 425 for your chicken. Because you want to get that barbecue sauce sticky enough for you and your family to eat or in friends. And then put it back in the oven for next, for a half, like 20 more minutes. Yep, so you want to put it on 425. Um... Put your oven up at 425 and then your barbecue sauce will be definitely cooked in the chicken while your chicken is back in the oven at 425 at the temperature you can definitely check your greens i mean your spinach get stirred around stir it and what i did was i add just a couple of tablespoons of, of of garlic salt, onion powder, and about three tablespoons of butter. And I'll show you. And also to my spinach, real lemon juice. But you can also use a fresh squeezed lemon. Squeeze out the seeds, but have the lemon like that. Squeeze it out, cut it in half first, of course. Catch the seeds into your palm of your hand, and then add that squeezed lemon. Um, juice you know from the lemon so yeah just a few tablespoons you know just enough to make sure your spinach is lemon limited limit taste limit taste but taste your food always taste your spinach so i'm gonna taste the spinach to see if it needs more butter more garlic salt or onion powder you know and i also use ground black pepper also as well let's show you right here right here It doesn't need nothing. Oh my gosh, it's that good. So, wow. That is amazing. Really good, really good spinach. So, I just used a few tablespoons of lemon juice from the bottle. Or if you want to use fresh, you can. Like I said, guard those seeds. Do not have those seeds into your spinach because you don't want your family and your friends to eat your spinach with seeds in it. And cook it on too low. I used about two boxes of spinach, but if you're cooking for more than two people, I would get like four boxes of spinach. Um, it's called the, the Green Giants. That's what I was raised on, Green Giants. When I was coming, when I was growing up with my mom, my dad, and my grandmothers, and my aunts and uncles, so you would use that definitely for their food. But now, I don't know. What they use now but you know everybody has their own type of spin on their own food now but definitely give that spinach a try with a few tablespoons of lemon juice um a few like two tablespoons of garlic powder or you can if you don't want to put two tablespoons you can put a tablespoon of garlic salt and one tablespoon of onion powder and one tablespoon 
of ground black pepper into your pot with the lid covered cook it on low um stir it up a few times but don't stir it up too much because you know if you, you know because you want your flavors of your seasoning to definitely make sure it's in the spinach so you definitely will want to actually stir just a few times you know and then let it go let it cook you know let it, let it alone but check on it you know every once so often for your spinach because you don't want it to burn also as well and then with your box you know because now they put the spinach into that plastic bag i was showing you earlier in the video um it your spinach will probably get like enough juice into it so you can use the juice from your spinach of course and then use the juice of the lemon juice if you want to use the bottle or if you want to use fresh it's totally up to you your way for your family whoever's allergic or not allergic to spinach you can substitute this for like rice if you want to make it with rice or you can chop up some uh, chop up like a green bell pepper or red bell pepper and a, and a yellow onion put that into your rice and make spanish rice that would be good also as well with a can of diced tomato with the juice and all and then once your rice is done about 15 minutes pour in your rice into a pot first and then your mixture you can also definitely use two um, taco, uh, taco seasoning too to your rice when you make the spanish rice you definitely add a couple like two tablespoons of taco sauce to your meat once it's done with butter and just stir it real good and always taste your food taste your spanish rice too i'll be making a video of that too of how to make spanish rice so the chicken is in the oven so i'm going to make the, my garlic toast so i'm going to do that now i'm going to cook this onto medium heat let the let the let the pot i mean the pot but the skillet it heat up for just a few seconds or a few a few minutes you know so then if you have any extra barbecue sauce um you can definitely make sure you put it into a bowl if you want to heat it up for just a few minutes you know serve it to your family so in case if that's not enough barbecue sauce going to your chicken thighs with the skin on them they can um you, you know put their own you know much sauce as they want on it but if you have that cute little ramekins like this you know you can definitely put the extra barbecue sauce definitely into your ramekin and serve it on the side of your plate to your family and to your friends in case they you know want to have extra you know sauce because sometimes that's what i do too i, I eat a, pe a few pieces of chicken of the meat and then the skin and then if i want to add if i want some more barbecue sauce i'll make sure i have a little bowl set aside to my plate and then i dip my meat into my sauce that's just me i like sauce so yeah so let's get this warmed up so it's warming up now I'm going to show you the box of garlic toast. Now this, this is called Family Faves. This is the Berlani Texas toast, but this is the three cheeses. So I'm just going to add just a few tablespoons of vegetable oil into the pot. But you can use any vegetable oil you want if you like canola oil, vegetable oil, you know, olive oil you can just a few tablespoons of it not too much okay. let that heat up a little bit more then you want to take the package out the box so it comes with four that's good enough for Hamilton and I and yep. definitely and before I came back to the kitchen i made sure i washed my hands i'm gonna wash them again you definitely want to make sure you have clean hands and wash your hands after as well you check your meat you put the barbecue sauce onto your meat you definitely want to make sure you wash your hands because you have to have clean hands in the kitchen that's definitely a must so okay my hands are definitely washed so I'm going to warm up just a little bit more and I'm going to add my first piece of Texas toast. Now this is the three cheese, the, the three cheese toast. You can use whatever Texas toast you want. You can serve it with Texas toast. You can serve it with, like, with a side salad. I'm just going to do, and you can also put this in the oven too as well. So just like that. And then you also want to cook this very quite so quickly so I got the two pieces already in there so far 
And you always want to clean as you go. So you definitely want to make sure you clean as you go to your kitchen. Because after dinner, you don't want to have to have a whole lot of dishes in your in your dishwater too as well. And if you're yeah, and also too, if your dishwasher dishwater, excuse me, if your dishwater does get nasty and dirty, make sure definitely to change your dishwater. Make sure it's hot water and some dish soap and a little bit of bleach bleach like a cap full of bleach to your dishwater so this is going out it's going going pretty good so that's good and then check on your chicken too this one as well and it's looking phenomenal it's smelling so good in here baked barbecue chicken with spinach and some veggies and garlic texas toast it's a very good meal to cook and also you want to make sure it's your so make sure that you have your plate already ready for your toast so I'm going to use my spatula right here so this is just a clean um, spatula if you want to use you can just check your garlic toast see if it's if it flipped over quite not yet check the other one And this meal does take a, uh, like a couple of hours to cook, but if you get this meal started early, like 3, 4 o'clock, this meal will be done by 6, 6.30, 7. So it depends on how you, what, and then it also depends too what time you got off work. If you got off work about 5 o'clock, and you trying to get yourself, you already got yourself together, showered, and everything like that. With your pajamas on or there's some comfortable clothes you know t-shirt and t-shirt and sweatpants are my things to have definitely i want to be comfortable while i'm eating dinner with my my husband so yes just check your toast it's looking good on the first side flip it over also too want to make sure that you add just a little bit more of vegetable oil but not too much just enough enough of that and then like that all right so then that side will be done and cooked in a few minutes once that side is done you want to just put your texas i mean your texas toast yes onto a separate plate just like this set it aside and put it onto your table and if you want to do like let's say also you want to do a side salad this will be good too also as well Nice and soft too. Okay. But don't get, get um. But you can also if if you don't like the three cheese called uh, Texas toast, you can definitely get um like just like the regular like the regular Texas toast. You can definitely do that. Try it a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Yes. So put just a few more tablespoons of oil to your skillet then your other two toasts will definitely cook just like that and then you can just throw this away and then just let this cook and your dinner best to be almost ready to eat. So yeah, let this cook just a few minutes, you know, on both sides. I say roughly five minutes or less, you know. So if you don't like your garlic, if you don't like your, not the garlic, but if you don't like your Texas toast um, crunchy, you know, I like it soft, between crunchy and soft, but not too crunchy, just right, like right in the middle, just right enough. So yeah, if you definitely want to do that, you can. 
like I said, you can serve it also too with a small side salad with your with your spinach and with your vegetables. It's a very good meal. So we are basically about done with this meal. And I forgot to cook the vegetables, but just the spinach is good enough. But if you also want to make vegetables, you can like I'll show you. Also as well, I'll show you. If you definitely want to make this, you can. This is our family brand. This is the California Billion. This is a 12 ounce. If you want to make two bags of these, put it into your pot with a couple, like I say, about three cups of water, and then let it cook like that. Add two tablespoons of butter if you want, or just cook it by the vegetable by itself. Yeah, this will be very good. Also, well, I totally forgot. I'll make this with another meal. So yeah, I'm gonna let you know about that. So once this um, spinach is done tonight with dinner, I'm going to also make that uh, make the the veggies tomorrow. So yeah, this is good enough. Just let this cook. You know, it's just like making it in the oven. You know, with your with your Texas toast, it looks very very good. So, and you're going to need just a few more pinches of vegetable oil to your cake skillet. So that way your Texas toast won't burn to your skillet. Because if you flip it, because you have to flip it on the other side too if you put it in the oven with like a piece of aluminum foil. Do that. And yeah, your toast will be done within five, ten, seven, eight minutes. And just yeah, dinner will be done and served. So I turned off the spinach because it's definitely hot with the lid covered. It's gonna keep that moisture in it. Um, so keep the moisture um, into your spinach. You can definitely make sure you turn off your burner so you don't forget when you serve this meal. And you could definitely serve the spinach into like a nice big serving bowl or a good serving bowl to your family and friends. This is a phenomenal meal to cook. Oh, yes. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Make sure you have a nice, um, some clean, nice. Make sure you have some um, nice and fresh, not nice, I'm saying nice, fresh hot water with a few dashes of dish soap and a little bit of bleach. So you have a nice, nice um, water. Another set of clean um, water dishwasher. I'm um, dishwasher. Dish water. I cannot speak today. I'm so sorry. Please excuse my mouth and my words. Are coming out of my mouth is horrible. So. Your chicken looks done. It's good. You can definitely turn off your oven. And I have to serve Hamilton his food first. And then I'll come back and show you my plate. But this looks phenomenal. Oh my god. It looks definitely delicious. I gotta show you. Oh yes. That looks so good. Okay. So once your burner is turned off, let it cool down into your kitchen and serve this meal to your family and friends. Um, yeah, enjoy serving with your Texas toast and your spinach and your vegetables. You have a nice, good meal, but I'll be back in just a few. Okay, I'm back with the final step of my plate. So we're going to test the spinach, but let's pray first. I mean, Father God, we thank you for this meal. Thank you for who you are. For the new subscribers, the people just stopping by and watching Donnie's Chicken, Gummy Kitchen. God bless them. Show them your place and mercy. God, we just ask you to just bless their home, bless their family, their loved ones, their kids. In Jesus' name, we ask that everybody continue to have a blessed and wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen. So, let's taste the spinach. Mmm. 
Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay, let's taste some chicken. I'll just taste this for you. Cook good. Mm. Garlic toast. I mean, Texas toast. Mm hmm. All right. Definitely give this meal a try. This is my, my barbecued baked chicken thighs with spinach and veggies. I forgot to cook, but I'll cook it tomorrow because the spinach is almost gone. So. Thank you for stopping by to everyone. God bless you for looking at my videos, my recipes. I hope you are making them, trying them out, trying something different to serve to your family. Have dinner on to your dinner, onto your table to you for you and your family. God bless you all. Please stay safe, stay encouraged, dream big to the sky. And I'm going to go eat, watch the TV show. God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your night. See you next video. Bye.